Well, hi guys. It is another dark, gloomy, but balmy 80 degree day. 80 degree day in February. Imagine that here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas here on Wednesday, February 28th, 2018. Good God. Made it to the end of another month in 2018. How many more times are we going to be able to say that? Uh, anywho, since it is Wednesday, I am in the middle of my uh, two-part climate change meltdown roundup rant. I just finished part one in which I concentrated just on the, uh, of course, the number one biggest story on the planet regarding uh, climate change this week and possibly the single biggest story in climate change history. And that is the just the ongoing meltdown, literal ongoing meltdown uh, happening in the Arctic in February. So I encourage you to go listen to that. And so in part two, I'm just going to pick up on the other stories about climate change that you might not be aware of. And this is going to be a... Uh, kind of a flotsam and jetsam hodgepodge. Uh, some of these stories coming from the mainstream media and many of these stories sent to me by Alert Tribes members. And I do appreciate you guys sending me all these links. Good Lord, I must be getting 50 or 60 uh, links from you guys every day. I appreciate you doing my job for me. I'm sorry I can't thank each individual one of my tribes members, but it, it's just getting too unwieldy. So anyway, I appreciate whoever sent me this story from Grit Post, real news for the working class. <coughs> All right, take it away, Grit Post. Top climate scientist, humans will go extinct if we don't fix climate change by 2023, I don't think they're saying humans will go extinct by 2023. Anyway, let's find out. Who are they talking about here? Uh, James Anderson, a top climate scientist, is warning that climate change will wipe out all of humanity unless we stop using fossil fuels. Stop using fossil fuels over the next five years. Uh, this is James Anderson, professor of atmospheric chemistry at Harvard University. I will definitely invite James to uh, talk to me and the voices from the doomosphere. Anyway, what is on James Anderson's mind? He is warning that climate change is drastically pushing Earth back to the Eocene epoch from 33 million years BC when there was no ice on either pole. Anderson says current pollution levels have already catastrophically depleted atmospheric ozone levels, which absorb 98% of ultraviolet rays to levels not seen in 12 million years. Anderson's assessment of humanity's timeline for action is likely accurate given that his diagnosis and discovery of Antarctica's ozone holes uh, led to the Montreal Protocol of 1987. Um, uh, uh, okay, let's see. I, I'm assume it would it would be nice if we could get some actual quotes. Nowhere in this article do they actually quote. James Anderson, but this is their summation. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, while some governments have made commitments to reduce their carbon emissions, Anderson warned that those measures were insufficient to stop the extinction of humanity by way of a rapidly changing climate. Instead, Anderson call, is calling for a Marshall Plan style endeavor in which the entire world takes extreme measures to transition off of fossil fuels completely within the next five years. Yes. Uh, and he is also cheerleading new efforts to reflect sunlight away from the Earth's poles. Yep. And we need to do this within the next five years. And we finally have a quote from James Anderson, quote, the chance that there will be any permanent ice left in the Arctic after the year 2022 is essentially zero, close quote, Anderson said, with 75 to 80 percent of permanent ice having melted already in the last 35 years. Yes. Anyway, moving along from human extinction, in that same vein from Reuters News, radical change, radical change urged over the next 20 years to attain climate goals. The world will need sweeping changes over the next 20 years, ranging from energy use to food production to achieve climate goals set by almost 200 nations, the new heads of top environmental think tanks said on Friday. So uh, these, whoever these people, who the hell are these people? I, 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 anyway, guys, uh, I think I've talked about this guy Rockstrom, Johan Rockstrom and Otmar Edenhofer. Both said revolutions were needed to tackle climate change, such as capturing greenhouse gas emissions from power plants or by reforming agriculture. Yes. Uh, they, they did say that governments are far from achieving the core goals in the 2015 Paris Agreement of limiting a rise in global average temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius. Quoting Rockstrom, we have just literally 20 years to either succeed or fail and the goals of getting the planet on a more sustainable path. So we have one guy at five years, two at 20 years, some people we don't need to talk about at 10 years. Okay, what is on the mind of Darja Mail? Darja, journalist Darja Mail, who has politely declined my request 
for uh, an interview from Humpty Dumpty Tribe telling me he has a new girlfriend that he needs to attend to so he can't find an hour in his schedule to talk to Humpty Dumpty Tribe but at least uh, we have we can we can listen in on him and from truth out Dar Jamel mourning our planet M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G grieving our planet climate scientists share their grieving process Take it away, Dar Jamel. I have been researching and writing about anthropogenic climate disruption for truth out for the past year because I have long been deeply troubled by how fast the planet has been emitting obvious distress signals. On a nearly daily basis I have sought out the most recent scientific studies, interviewed top researchers and scientists and connected the dots to give readers as clear a picture as possible about the magnitude of the emergency we are in. This work has had emotional consequences. I have struggled with depression anger and fear. I have watched myself shift through some of the five stages of grief, which are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. I have grieved for the planet and all the species who live here and continue to do so as I work today. I have been vacillating between depression and acceptance of where we are both as victims, fragile human beings, and as perpetrators, we are the species for altering the climate system of the planet we inhabit to the point of possibly driving ourselves extinct in addition to the 150 to 200 species we are already driving extinct daily. Can you relate to this grieving process? If so, you might find solace in the fact you are not alone as climate science researchers, scientists, journalists, and activists have all been struggling with grief around what we are witnessing. And I might return to this tomorrow uh, in my Thursday a depressed collapsitarian whine uh, listening to what more and more uh, climate scientists are telling uh, Darja Mail uh, about you know we're fucked. Okay let's go over there switch gears over there to, new, to Newsweek magazine seven myths Big oil is using to convince people it can solve climate change. In the past month alone, major players within the fossil fuel industry itself, big oil, have made some big announcements regarding climate change. BP revealed plans to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. Here is Shell defended its green energy budget. Here is Exxon Mobil included a section dedicating to reducing its emissions. Wow. <clears throat> But the idea of a green oil company oh, on, that ain't even That's producing clean fossil fuels warning, warning. is a dangerous myth. Such myths obscure the irreconcilability between burning fossil fuels and environmental protection Yet, the myths continue to be perpetuated to the determination of our planet. 
Okay. I don't need to uh, keep hitting this. Let Newsweek explain it to you. Myth number one. Climate change can be solved with the same thinking that created it. Myth number two. Climate change will not spell the end of the fossil fuel industry. Myth number three, renewable investment means oil companies are seriously tackling climate change. Myth four, hard climate regulation is not an option. Myth number five, without cheap fossil fuels, the developing world will stop. Myth six, big oil must be involved in climate policy making. And myth number seven, nature can and must be tamed to address climate change. Talking about the myth of geoengineering. Okay, well, here is one. No shit, Sherlock. You better believe, wow, your old doomsday real estate investor uh, having decided the past couple of weeks to save $20,000 in taxes. I'm going to try to squeeze by two more years. Your old doomsday profit uh, real estate investor is going to try to eke it out two more years here in a Texas floodplain. I need to get through two more hurricane and flood seasons in Texas before I sell my house. Thank you U.S. News and World Report for uh, explaining what I don't already know. How climate change could impact your home value. Yes, in January, FEMA uh, announced that they would be updating New York City's flood maps and, and all of these flood maps. I'm already in a fucking uh, uh, floodplain. So, if you live in an area that has been plagued by floods, or if you are concerned because 2014 to 2017 were the warmest years on records, you may be asking yourself, how will climate change impact my home's value? Well, it all depends on, of course, whether my home washes down the Colorado River, the other Colorado River, uh, in the next uh, two years. So some of the predictions, demand will decrease for waterfront homes, uh, your insurance may go up. You could see higher property taxes. But of course, there will be some winners. Some property values, such as those not in floodplains, will go up. Okay, moving along. I, I found this right on the mainstream media science pages. Uh, this outfit called The Nib. And I got a chuckle out of this. Nobody is coming to save us from climate change. We cannot buy our way up way out of it, we are going to need collective action on a global scale. And uh, collective action on a global scale. So what the nib is, what it does, it shows all, it's a roundup of all of these editorial cartoons and stuff poking fun at all of these apocalyptimists. It, it, it takes a survey of, of all of these apocalyptimists talking about how we are going to turn this freight train around without, without uh, affecting our, the good life 
It's just a survey of all of the knee slappers that the mainstream media has been tossing around as ways we're going to uh, uh, to turn this around anyway. Uh, I, I already talked about this yesterday. Of course, Bear is repeating Norway's underground doomsday sea vault is under threat from climate change. Oh, shit, yes. <sighs> anyway, I think we've been through the flooding doomsday seed vault from that horseshit to coral reefs. Coral reefs at risk of dissolving as oceans get more acidic. Oh, shit, coral reefs could start to dissolve before 2100 as man-made climate change drives acidification of the oceans, scientists said this week. Acidifications Acidification will threaten sediments that are building blocks for reefs, as corals already face risks from rising ocean temperatures, pollution, and overfishing. Uh, quoting the new study, quote, Coral reefs will transition to net dissolving before the end of the century. No shit, Sherlock. All right, from coral reefs to penguins, cruel climate dilemma for king penguins. Feed or breed. Global warming is on track to wipe out 70% of the world's king, the world's king penguins by centuries end, putting the regal birds on a path towards extinction, researchers warned on Monday, as climate change drives away the fish and squid upon which the flightless creatures depend, the penguins must swim further afield to find sustenance for their hungry hatchlings on land. Quoting penguin hugger Celine Labone, quote, if global warming continues at its current pace, the species may disappear. Okay, from penguins to the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures will keep rising in the Pacific Northwest. New climate models confirm. And guys, I just have to run through this. Uh, let's see, from the Pacific Northwest to the tropics, some of the last glaciers in the tropics will be gone in about a decade. No shit, Sherlock. <clears throat> One of the most visible signs of climate change are the ways in which glaciers and ice sheets have been disappearing all over the world. This trend is not reserved to the Arctic ice cap or the Antarctic basin, of course. On every part of the planet, scientists have been monitoring glaciers that have been shrinking in the past few decades. Hmm. And so let's go down to New Guinea. New Guinea. Did you realize there were glaciers in New Guinea? Well, uh, there are today, but come back and uh, in 10 years, there will be no glaciers in New Guinea or Peru or anywhere else like that. Okay, let's see. Three more. 
environmental activists are suing governments over climate change and winning. All right, and what are those Republicans up to? Wow. From Bloomberg uh, magazine, these Republican climate hawks get low environmental marks. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, Republican members on the bipartisan Climate Solutions Caucus scored an average of just 16% on a scorecard released Tuesday by the League of Conservation Voters that track how lawmakers voted on major environmental uh, issues last year. I'm surprised they, uh, they uh, make, scored 16%. Um, anyway, this is Alex Terrell uh, from the League of Conservation Voters, quote, Republicans are using the caucus to provide cover to hide their extreme anti-environmental record. What we need is action, not just talk. GOP, GOP members of the caucus have voted to open Alaska's pristine Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to oil drilling, to kill rules protecting streams from the effects of coal mining, to rescind a federal rule requiring oil companies to disclose their payments to foreign governments, and to roll back regulations on the emissions of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas. No shit, Sherlock. But maybe those young Republicans are gonna save us. Why college Republicans think the GOP should act on climate change. Yes. Uh, a group of more than 20 college Republican groups issued a call to action on climate change with the endorsement of a proposal for a federally imposed carbon tax. Wow! The announcement from the newly announced Students for Carbon Dividends group is the latest signal of a fissure between an older generation of elected Republicans who view climate change policies with skepticism and young conservatives who accept, accept global warming science and want to see a conservative solution to the problem. Yes, the young Republicans are going to save us all from climate change. But anyway, guys, I have to wrap up this rant because the day is getting away from me. The sun's coming out. Here's what I'm doing now that I'm done with uh, ranting about the, the, the collapse of the planet. I'm getting in my gas-sucking car the first place I'm going to is Bank of America. Bank of America to meet with somebody up there to help me get Verizon Wireless to put a stop to uh, hitting my Visa debit card to, uh, for payments on an account that I closed two months ago. When I leave Bank of America, I'm going across the street to Lowe's Home Improvement to buy another door than the one I bought yesterday because I've decided the door that I bought yesterday isn't big enough. So I need to take this door back and change it for a bigger door. And after that, 
I think I have finally found a gas sucking lawnmower to uh, help me do my planet nibbling here uh, in paradise before this house goes washing away. So I need to get on the road, me and the little dog. The global industrial economy calls and we must answer. Smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. Bye guys.